Hey everyone, it's Justin. Thank you for watching and welcome to my house. That's Justin's house. In this video, we're going to cover contract management within the hardware asset workspace. That's right. Tokyo gave us contract capabilities within the hardware asset workspace. We got a dedicated menu item specifically around contracts. So if you're not familiar with the hardware asset workspace, this is what it looks like. Um, basically, you have access to all the things you might need to do to manage hardware, um, the models and the purchasing and the uh, where things are assigned and transfer orders, stock orders, all that stuff you can kind of see on the screen here of different things you can do within the hardware asset space. But today we're going to talk about this new button that came with Tokyo, and that is contract management. So if I get rid of my arrow there and hover over it, you can see contract management. And when I click on it, it takes me to a dedicated landing page just for contract management. And you can see I've got a reproduction of what you saw on the home page there for hardware asset management, but specific to contracts. So let's look at them here. We've got contracts that are 30 days away from the renewal, 90 days away from the renewal. We've got some contracts that have been detected as duplicates, some contracts that don't have a contract administrator or a missing end date, or they're missing the vendor, or it's an open request. Someone has come in and started a new contract like I can do here. I could jump up and say, hey, I wanna start a new contract and get that process rolling for authorizing and negotiating and all that stuff you would do for a contract. So I can choose from the different contract models and this is all standard contract management stuff. I won't cover all that in this demo, but I wanted to show you that you could get to this from this new workspace within Hardware Asset Workspace. So let's hide that there for a second and take a look at what else is on this screen. We have the contract expenditures by type. So maybe non-disclosures, maintenance, insurance, warranty, service contracts or other. Um, down below that, I got the contract expenditure by vendor. This is all demo, demo data, so don't think this is real, but there you got ASUS and AT&T and a SysID, um, APC and other, but about 2.8 thousand um, expenses related to different vendors. And then just behind my head here, we've got the expiring contracts, so stuff that's actually expiring. So I could have gotten to the expiring contracts from this little drop down menu here. And maybe I wanted to look at stuff that was 30 days to renew, or I've got it right here expose me and say, hey, I've got a Cisco maintenance contract that's set to expire. Let's take a look at what that looks like. So here's something with all the contract details filled in, all the financial information, renewal information. So this is set to automatically renew. Um, we've got some T's and C's that are included with this one, as well as linked to here separately. I've got two child contracts with this one, so maintenance two and maintenance three. I can see what assets are covered. I think this is funny for Cisco covering a Dell Precision and CyberPower PC Gamer Extreme uh, laptop maybe, or PC that it's covering, but hey, that's our demo data. Um, but I've got other things like the expense lines, users, CIs cover, different service offerings or commitments approval history, contract rate cards, and contract renewal requests. So if I wanted to come in and say, hey, this contract is expired, um, this ended on or ends on December 2nd of 2022, I can actually click the renewal button, which then kicks off the contract renewal workflow. So this is a workflow that is configured out of the box for some basic steps, but maybe we need to adjust it for your organization and how they'd like to renew contracts. It being a flow or a workflow, we can actually do that. I can adjust the terms of the contract, so start date, end date, what the payment amount, using that button there. I can cancel, save, or I can build the terms and conditions that you saw in the beginning when I scrolled down to the bottom of all the terms and conditions that are, it says English, but this looks like some Laura Mipsum actually associated there with our contract. But that's it. That's the new contract management tab in the contract workspace. I'll just show the different groupings here at the top. They're all the same. They're just linking to different types of contracts. So you see here, I've got leases and insurance and warranties, purchase agreements, purchase orders, software licenses, non-disclosures or NDAs, my personal contracts, terms and conditions and my approvals, all available to me in this contract management landing page in the hardware asset workspace. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, or share it with somebody who you think is interested in contract management within ServiceNow. And until next time, don't forget to always be learning.